and I will then be flown to Copenhagen Airport, where I'll take a train. Also, Alfie is here with me. I don't think he really wants me to leave. Hello, fellow humans. My name is Poppy, and I have a fat backlog of travel footage that I've been meaning to take you through for ages. But, you know, life happens. So, to get the momentum going again, I thought I'd share my somewhat recent Copenhagen trip with you. But in an effort to make this video a bit more interesting and hopefully helpful, I've decided to forego the usual vlog format and instead give you a list of recommendations. If you choose to stick around, we'll go through my personally curated list of experiences and eateries worth trying should you find yourself in the Danish capital. Now before we begin, and although it didn't feel necessary to add accommodation options to my official list of recommendations, I do still want to give a quick honourable mention to our chosen hostel. We stayed at the local Next House, which ran us about £50 a night, and it served us very well indeed. Everything was clean, the building had all kinds of amenities and bonuses, ranging from a small indoor football pitch to omnidirectional beer pong tables, and the sleeping pods felt very futuristic and funky. The one downside was that we could hear a basement party, which was hosted by the hostel, going throughout the night when we first arrived, which we might have joined had we been less sleepy, but instead it just kept us awake. So if you're not into bumping bass, maybe try staying in a different spot, or requesting a room in a different wing. And lastly, one quick disclaimer. Tivoli will not be on this list because I actually didn't get a chance to go, seeing as it was closed when I was there. But, in theory, I do urge you to visit, I just have no personal anecdotes or footage to support that claim. So yeah, I have it on good authority, it's worth the visit, just not my own authority. Now with all that out of the way, here are 15 other things to do in Kuhnhalm. Firstly, you have to visit Studio Arhoi. Whether or not you're an experienced potter or glass worker yourself, this little workshop-store hybrid is an undeniable marvel. Every shelf draws you in and makes you want to examine the abstract shapes and familiar forms in all their loving, handmade glory. And being able to see the staff work their magic in real time only adds to the immeasurable charm of their creations. I immediately fell in love with this exasperated mushroom and had to buy him. And yes, I have since been told what else it looks like, but I didn't think of that at the time, so please let me have my mushroomy joy in peace. <laughs> As you leave the studio, you'll find yourself in Grebredetorf Square, where you might also want to chow down on a hefty burger from Sporvein. This restaurant is decorated and laid out like a tram carriage, and I can't deny the aesthetic did add to the experience. Aside from the novelty of the interior design, the menu is refreshingly customizable and includes veggie options as well. As you can see, I went for a guacamole topping with some wedges and it was dangerously Moorish considering its gargantuan size. And I also got one of the most thirst-quenching elderflower drinks I've ever had. If and when you feel fueled up for a walk, you must make some time to peruse the Assistant's Kierkegaard, or Assistant Cemetery. I don't want to give too much away, but it was possibly the main highlight for me. Not only is it home to the graves of legends like Hans Christian Andersen, which frankly had me a little starstruck, but it's also a fascinating insight into the Scandinavian relationship with death and the afterlife. If you're in the mood for a starchy snack, you should try dining at one of many Gröd establishments. This is essentially a chain of porridge cafes, and although I stupidly forgot I don't like peanuts when ordering the peanut butter oats, yes, that actually happened, I'm confident the rest of the menu would have been amazing. It all smelled great, and this homemade lime thyme lemonade easily ranked within the top three lemonades of my lifetime. And if you're wondering, we went to the one in the food market on Linnesgade. The market itself, called Torhelene Kerbeha, or at least sort of because I don't speak Danish and I'm trying my best, also hosts numerous stalls where you can find groceries, plants, bougie looking chocolates, and what feels like every possible smurderbrud combination. So if you make the trip over, you might as well try everything the halls have to offer. And now for an obvious one. You probably knew this was coming, and it likely doesn't even need saying. But hey, I'm gonna do it anyway. You really should visit Nuhan. Yes, it's touristy, but that doesn't make it any less stunning. 
Simply standing in that seaside setting and beholding all those iconic painted buildings elicits so much pure, unadulterated joy. I honestly found myself wanting to keep coming back to the area despite the constant stream of people, because I just liked it so much. And once you're in Newhound, you might as well treat yourself to a meal from one of the many restaurants along the canal. The location certainly makes them pricier, but if you can afford it, it's worth the experience. We had one dinner at Newhound 37, and it was easily the best meal of our whole trip. I started with a delicious warming lobster soup, and then chose one of two salmon pasta dishes for my main. My brother had the other, and both were divine. But if you're looking for something simpler, there are plenty of dessert spots in the area too. We went to Waffelbargaden, where they had a special deal including ice cream topped waffles and hot chocolate. Both delicious, of course. If you then meander north of Nuhan and promenade along the waterfront for about 20 minutes, you'll reach the impressive star-shaped castellet, or fortress, as well as the Little Mermaid statue which was erected in honour of Hans Christian Andersen. Both spots are completely free of charge, yet significant landmarks for visitors. And the fortress is so well maintained and intriguingly designed that it feels more like a local park. We spotted countless dog walkers perusing the perimeter. Speaking of dogs, I also think it's worth copping a sausage from one of countless vendors across the city, assuming you're not veggie or vegan. I had to guess a bit when it came to what to order, as well as answering the sausage man's questions, but we ended up with some great mustard mayo topped treats. Don't knock the sauce till you try it. Thoughts on the mayonnaise sausage? Was good in Danish. Probably good or good. <laughs> now, while this experience isn't unique to Copenhagen, I nevertheless recommend going vintage shopping around town. The shops in the university neighbourhood, for example, are all conveniently close to one another, each with their own vibe, and it's fun to see how the selection differs between them all. This was Wasteland. It had lots of unique pre loved items as well as new, unusual accessories. But we also went to Quirky Lane, which was particularly pretty, plant filled, and pink. And the second hand shop called Episode, meanwhile, just had so much stock across so many floors that we struggled to resist buying things. Honestly, no matter the subculture or style, you're probably going to find it in one of these stores, so just go and explore them for yourself. And when you need a break from the thrifting, Next Door Cafe, conveniently and fittingly, is just a few paces away. Its quirky, maximalist decor entices you to enter, and once you're there, the rustic, healthy menu provides the necessary nourishment to keep you going. We were particularly enthralled by the tabletops, filled with mementos and souvenirs from visitors past. We even spotted some Kenyan shillings, which was a nice little throwback to when we lived in Nairobi ourselves. If you're in need of more budget-friendly walking spots, I also recommend traversing Kongens Hill, or the Royal Garden, and admiring the Renaissance Castle Rosenborg Slot from afar. You can also enter the castle, but it looks pretty sweet from the outside too. Honestly, I just recommend walking anywhere and seeing what you find. This is a map. We are here right now. The place we're staying is roughly here. This is the train station where we'll be picking my brother up shortly. Tomorrow, we plan to spread this way and also go up to the fortress over there and then back down or something like that. We didn't use any public transport or taxis on our trip, and yes, it was tiring. So tiring, in fact, that my recurring knee issues fled up. But we came across so many side streets and sites we hadn't planned for that just made us fall in love with the city even more. <laughs> and now for another little chain recommendation. Now I know pizza preferences are very subjective, and admittedly this is the only one I tried in the city, but all that aside, I do think Frankie's Pizza is worth a visit. The atmosphere is unlike that of any pizza joint I know, because the interior makes it feel more like a retro bar, meanwhile the pizza toppings on offer are similarly distinctive. I personally went for the mushroom, truffle, and potato option because I was amused by the concept of doubling up on carbs, and it turned out to be undeniably Moorish. 
On top of that, as seems to be the theme for all these venues, the drinks were once again exactly to my liking. Thought I was done with strolling spots? Think again. Because I also recommend walking around the grounds of Der Kongliga Bibliothekshalle. As the name would suggest, it's the garden belonging to the Royal Library, and it just looks so magical at sundown. As do the nearby courtyards and streets. But the whole area is beautiful to be honest. I guess the takeaway here is that if it's got royal and or garden in the name, I'm probably gonna like it. And lastly, it's Denmark, so my list wouldn't be complete without mentioning the cafes and bakeries. There are so many places to grab a light snack or drink, it's just a case of picking the one that suits your vibe the most. I sampled every kind of cinnamon-based swirl, square, or sandwich in spots ranging from chains like Buka, La Kagehuset, or Espresso House, to more independent vendors as well. No matter what or where, it always tasted amazing because these folks really do know their pastries. Not to mention the decor everywhere was super cute, even in the chains. And there you have it, 15 of my very own recommendations for what to do in the Danish capital. Of course, this barely even scratches the surface for how much this beautiful city has to offer. There are so many sites I didn't manage to get to, museums we didn't visit, just iconic locations like the Round Tower or the Botanical Garden. I guess the obvious next step is for me to go back there, try another 15 things, and then tell you guys about them. Whether or not that happens anytime soon, I just want to reiterate what a cool place Copenhagen is. If you're on the fence about visiting, this is your sign to just do it. Don't debate it, just do it. And if you can't afford to right now, that's understandable, but save up and do it, if you can. But do it. And you know what else you should do? Like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment if you have any thoughts, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content like this. As always, thank you for watching, I hope you have a lovely day, and goodbye. Bye bye friend. Bye bye friend. Oh. I'll see you soon.